Hey, what's going on you guys? Today we are talking about a really important group of variables called container variables. And as the name suggests, they are just variables that contain other variables. And they are really important in game dev, typically behind the scenes, but important nonetheless. Today we're gonna to be talking about one called arrays or lists, but I'll quickly show you both that we are going to be talking about. There's really only two types in Godot and other programming languages, uh, they have more, but you have the uh, array, which is denoted denotated, notated by uh, these square brackets. And then you also have a dictionary, which is denoted, <laughs> denoted by these curly brackets right here. Uh, the difference we'll get into later, except that uh, basically a dictionary is unordered and you look things up in it like a dictionary. Like if you want to get some information in there, we would ask like what the key or the, the word is and we'd get the definition. Whereas an array just kind of keeps things in some order. Now I'm going to change this to list because uh, I like to call these lists because they call them that in Python, and I think it really suggests uh, more so what they are. Lists really just contain other variables in some order. It keeps that order just like you would a shopping list. Uh, and both of these together are really important in building things like, for instance, if you're making a multiplayer lobby, uh, you know, what are the players in your game? You have them all in a list or an array. Uh, if you have an inventory system, like for instance, like a Pokemon game, you've got the bag, um, you know, you've got like the item slot, this slot, blah, 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 and items in those slots, that's gonna be using a combination of dictionaries and lists. Uh, I mean, they're just very, very helpful. Anyway, it's very, very important. We're gonna go ahead and crack into it. So to write a list, you essentially have the option of one, just writing it all in one line or hitting enter. Uh, and then you write like one thing, another thing, another thing like that. Um, but we're gonna be doing it all in one line today. And I typically do that with lists that aren't too long like today. So you can make these literally anything. So I can put one here, I can put um, a string, say hello. Uh, I can put a Boolean value, right? So I can say true. Okay, and now we have a list that uh, contains these three variables. Obviously, these are not uh, assigned anywhere, or I'm sorry, three uh, data types, right? We've got strings and we've got this. And you can really put anything here. You could put a node, like for instance, if we make an instance of something, uh, or for instance, we could put bullet scene in here, just like that, and that still works. And now if I go ahead and I say print list, Sorry if you can hear my pug in the background. We're going to run this. You can see that it, it goes ahead and prints what's in the list. One hello as you expect. And then this again, as we talked about, is the kind of identifier of this scene, right? And so the point here is really just to say like, this is a list. Here is the uh, kind of syntax, right? We've got the um, one item in the list. Uh, then we have a comma, then we have the next item. And then you don't put a comma at the end of the list. That's a no-no. Uh, although that doesn't break your game, it's just kind of like a, a very taboo thing to do, uh, if you will. Anyway, uh, again, as, can, as, you could, as I said, you can uh, go ahead and separate this into separate lines if you wish. Some people like to do this because it looks a little more organized. I do that with my dictionaries, but not usually with my lists unless they're really long. Um, and yes, yeah, so we'll go ahead and get into all the things you can do with a list. I am first going to go ahead and add a few values to this list. Uh, so for this example, I'm going to be pretending we're basically dealing with the item slot uh, of an old school Pokemon game. So we've got a Pokeball in here. Okay. Uh, then we've got a Great Ball. Okay. Then we've got a Potion. Okay. Uh, then we have a TM50. And then I'll, have, I'll do one more team. Uh, or we'll do we'll do HM 69. All right. Okay. So again, if we run this, you can see that now we've just got uh, this list of strings here, uh, and here they are. And this is our I, this is our bag in Pokemon. Now, there's a few things you can do with lists that are really important uh, in game. Right? You can pick up items, and just in a list, you can add items from this list. You can remove items from this list, uh, and there are uh, several different ways that you can do that. Now. If we go to this list, right, let's say we're picking up some item, uh, what you typically do is append, actually, let me change this to items. Let's just delete this, spell items correctly. Okay, there we go. All right, so, um, all right, here we go. So let's say that uh, in the ready function, I'm simulating that my character is picking up uh, a hyper potion, right? So what I would do is I say list dot append. Why is it not like this? Oh, I'm sorry. Items uh, dot append, right? Because items is the name of our list. 
We're calling the function append on it. And in here, we're gonna say, what are we adding to this list? And in here, again, we could put anything. We could put a one, we could put true, um, but I'm going to put that we're picking up a uh, hyper potion. And again, in the real game, right, this might be a, a literal item, right? The, uh, like an actual node, like the scene here that represents that hyper potion. But right here, we're just using a string. Okay, now if we go ahead and print items, okay, uh, you can see that we have our list at with hyper potion at the, the end there. So I'm actually going to go and do this, print items. So then you can see that it, it has changed, right? We've added the hyper potion and you can see we've added it to the end. If I run this as many times, you're going to see that these stay in the exact same order and that it goes right there to the end. Now, if you want to stick something at the front of array uh, of the array, you can say push underscore front, and then you put whatever item you want. And this will stick it at the front of the array. Just like that, you can see the hyper potions down in the front. Now, before we get into anything else, it's important to know something about uh, these arrays or these lists. And that is that they are ordered and uh, each uh, item in this list has an index or a, a kind of position right in that list. So we would call this position or index zero, right? Then we have position one, two, three, and four, AKA negative one. I'll get into that in a second, but essentially you start with zero and then you just count on. So this is something that gets confusing uh, even for experienced programmers because sometimes you forget that the list starts with zero and you'll, you'll mean to like grab uh, item number one from that list and, or the first item off that list, you'll grab the second item. So how you would do that is to simply do, we'd use this syntax right here, if I can type. Okay, so we'd say print items, brackets, and then we'd say the position or index of whichever one we want. So if I want to do the first one, again, I put zero here, and you can see in the middle, it should just say Pokeball, because that's at position zero. Now, little quiz, if I want to do potion, which uh, index should I put in here? Well, the index of potion is going to be one. I'm sorry, two, because zero, one, two. So even, even uh, I will get confused here. And we run this, and you can see that potion is printed there because we've selected that from the list. Uh, now, the other thing to note here is if we put a negative one, right, this is going to grab us the end of the list, right? So HM69. But we can also, in this case, put a four, and we'll get the end of the list. And that, again, is just because this list has a size of one, two, three, four, five elements, right? So we know that's zero, one, two, three, four. So four is the end of the list, okay? Uh, but if you just want what's ever at the end, you can just say uh, negative one because that's just kind of a shorthand that's helpful. So you can grab that. And obviously this is useful for things other than printing, right? If you have a physical potion at the end of the list, uh, you can go ahead and grab that. Now. Uh, before we keep going into accessing items, I do want to say about adding items in the list, we can go ahead and add items at a specific point now that we've gotten that established, right? And that is done by items.insert. And then you can go ahead and stick something uh, at some point. So you see, first is the position or the index, right? If I want to put something between Pokeball and Great Ball, I would put that at position one. And then we'd say whatever it is. Okay. And then we run that and you can see that it has inserted in between these. The other thing you can do is if you want to replace one of these items, you can do this, right? We can say items and we'll say zero and then you say equals uh, and then whatever you want, right? Okay. And if we go ahead and do that, you can see that Pokeball has been replaced with Ola Hegu. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you can do that. that. That's pretty important to know. And those are those basically how you add things or modify the list. Now, I want to keep going to accessing things in the list. Again, you can do items, this, and then the index, right? Other ways that you can uh, access items in the list, uh, you can check if the list has an item, right? You can say, for instance, if um, Pokeball, right? And then you can say in items, and we'll say print hello, okay? Uh, now, of course, it's going to print hello because Pokeball is in items, right? So if the, po if the list items contains whatever is in this if statement, then this evaluates the true and thus this is run. Now, there's another thing that you can do this, uh, another syntax, syntax, syntax way you can do this, which is go if um, we can say if 
items dot has Pokeball. And that's exactly the same thing. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Dot has Pokeball. Um, and that's the exact same thing as what we just did, except it's a built in function. Uh, and for some people, that's just easier to remember. All right. Okay, you can also grab things by their value, but this is a little bit more difficult, uh, and that's not really the point of items. If you want to grab something by its value, you should be using a dictionary most likely. But uh, I'll quickly show you the way you do that, and that would be that you use items.find, okay? Uh, and then you put the value of what you want to find. So we'll say, for instance, great ball, okay? Uh, and then what I'll do is just print this, and you'll see what it actually returns is the index. So returns one. So if we replace print with uh, items, um, ba -ba -ba -ba, we make this brackets here. Okay, and then we do that. Okay, then you'll see that then it returns great ball because we found it and then did that. Um, now, that might seem like it doesn't make sense and that's because that's not really how you use lists, but that's just an example of how you might do that. Uh, now we'll go about uh, how you remove things from lists, right? So let's say I use an item, let's say I'm using a potion here, then I will go ahead uh, and say items dot remove. Okay, and this uh, depends on the position. So we'll remove something at some position. So we'll, rem we'll remove, for instance, we want to remove potion, remove something at position two. And you can see uh, now potion is missing down here. You can also do uh, something called erase. Okay, and this erases by the value. So here, again, I would put potion and we could get the same result, but instead we're removing it by the value here. All right, so uh, that is just some of the things you can do with lists. There's tons of other ones. I highly recommend that you go up to your search help here and search array. Again, I call them lists, but they're technically called arrays in Godot, uh, but a lot of people will call them by both names, and that's because that's, uh, you know, in a lot of different programming languages, it, it goes bef uh, between both names there. And you can see all the cool functions that it has. Most of them make a lot of sense once you understand lists. For instance, you have the count. Count will tell you how many times one of those. So for instance, if you do count Pokeballs, it'll say how many Pokeballs are in this list. Uh, if you do, um, blah, 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 blah. Where is a good one? Oh, shuffle. Shuffle will just randomly place all them in some order in the list. Remember that the array is organized such that this is always going to be position zero. Where dictionary, it has no position uh, in the list. Uh, but if you click shuffle, uh, I'm sorry, or run the uh, the function shuffle, it's going to re or reorganize all these into different positions. All right. Now, what I like to do to kind of go over like how you would actually do this is to make a little kind of simulation of us in our Pokemon game in the bag, cycling through our list and how that might work. So what I'll do here in I'm sorry, not in ready, but in physics process, it'll say if input dot is underscore action just pressed and I'll do UI down we'll say so or I guess we'll do yeah we'll do down okay okay right I'm gonna pass because I need to make another thing so we're gonna say var index we say equals zero okay so we're gonna start with an index of zero then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say uh, index plus equals one. Okay, so we're incrementing our index by one every time we hit the down button. And then we're gonna go ahead and make sure that the index does not go uh, or not become greater than whatever the size of this list is. So we'll say if index is greater than the size of the list minus one, right? So items dot size, okay, minus one then index equals zero. Um, so I didn't actually go over this function, which is my bad, it's pretty helpful. Essentially this counts the number of items in the array, uh, and that's all it is, it tells you the size of the array. So the size here is one, two, three, four, five, right? So the size is five here, um, and so thus we can make sure that the index never goes over four, 
meaning the last item in here, by saying if our index is greater than the item size minus one or the list size minus one, uh, then do that. Because again, the size of the list is five, um, but the index only goes up to four. So size minus one will give you uh, the, the maximum index, right? All right, uh, now if I go ahead and print index, you can see what we've just accomplished. Haven't done anything really with the list quite yet. Uh, but I can go one, two, three, four, and then it goes back to zero. One, two, three, four, zero. Okay, cool. Now what we can do is actually use that to cycle through our list, right? So we can say print, okay? Uh, and we'll say that we want to print the items dot get, or not get, I'm sorry, um, just the brackets, and we'll say index, okay? Now if we do this, you can see that every time we press the down arrow, it's cycling through a different thing in our list. So we're cycling through our Great Ball, our Potion, TM50, Sigma 69, and the next one will be the Pokeball because it starts from the, the beginning. So we can see we're going through our bag and it's just kind of cycling through. And then, so obviously in the real game, um, you would you know show some kind of graphical or visual representation of this on the screen. In this case, we're just putting it down here in the output, but uh, that's pretty convoluted and really just kind of monotonous work. This is the programming and, and difficult concept behind that. And we kind of went over all of that right here in describing items. Anyway, uh, really hope you stay tuned for the next one where we go over dictionaries. Dictionaries are a lot like lists, except again, they are unordered. Uh, but anyway, I'll get into that in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.